Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of the Info Wire podcast. Uh, today I take a break from wire bending and focus on acrylic. So uh, I got this inlaid acrylic request for, uh, to put these four letters in this retainer, uh, and I thought I would record it and, and show you how I do it. Uh, first things first, what you need to do is find the midline and find the top of where you, how tall you want your letters. So there's the top, here's the bottom. This is how tall I want the letters. Now, the reason I do the midline is there's only four letters in this. If you have five letters or odd, you're going to start with the letter directly on the midline, right in the middle, right on the midline. If you have even numbers, take the two middle, sorry, letters, take the two middle letters and start on either side of the midline. Uh, so what I have is YOLO, Y-O-L-O. -O. So I'm taking O-L, I'm putting it on the either side of the midline, uh, trying to keep them the same thickness or same width, um, top and bottom. So the bottom of the O should be off of my bottom line, the same as the bottom of the L. Uh, the top of the O should be at the top, you know, the top of the line, the same as the L. So in other words, keep them the same. Oh, I almost forgot how you prep your retainer first. Just run it through like you normally would a uh, regular retainer. Just don't pumice it. Uh, this serves, uh, two, ser serves two points, sorry. Uh, one is uh, a little texture so that your, your pencil can actually make a mark on it. If it was shiny, it wouldn't make these marks. And another purpose is just to save time because you don't need to pumice it until after you uh, put acrylic on this again and grind it down. So. Uh, just remember, don't pumice it. Put it right back on here uh, and, and mark on it. Oh, another good reason to use a pencil is to be able to erase it. Uh, again, I, you can't see my upper and lower marks, but I can see them. So I'm just making them where the upper and lower marks are. And you just make those parallel to each other. And uh, again, use a pencil. That way you can erase it if you... Uh, make a wrong mistake or the wrong size or something like that. If you have a steamer, uh, if you need to start over, which I did on this one one, one time, uh, I just went in the back, steamed, steamed it off, came right off. Uh, okay, so YOLO. I had to look this up too. You only live once. <laughs> I didn't realize that, uh, but uh, uh, I had to look it up. It probably shows my age. I thought I was on top of all this stuff. Uh, so, BRB. Okay, uh, time to grind out the letters. Make sure you choose a burr that has a small bit. Uh, round is better. Uh, and make sure it's not wider than your letters. Uh, you want it either smaller or the same size. Most likely smaller, so if you get off course a little bit, you'll still be within the thickness of your letter. I like to use a pencil grip on my handpiece, and I also like to use the model. Uh, put the retainer on the model. Not necessary, but it gives me a better grip. Uh, hold on a second, I'll get this in focus, but what I'm doing here is I'm just lightly engraving or lightly just getting the surface of these letters just to get rid of the pencil mark and that will guide me when I go deeper uh, you want to go pretty deep in your trenching on this so the colors really pop out especially if you're using a light color if the, if the patient asks for a light color I'm using black on this so you don't have to go that deep but let's say you don't go very deep and uh, you, when you go to finish it you may have some uh, Thin areas, you may have some thick areas, may not look very good. So go as deep as you can without getting to the cast. And you'll know you'll hit the cast if you're on the cast because you'll see, for instance, in this example, white smoke coming up uh, because the model is white. So here I am, I'm, I'm just progressively getting deeper and deeper. Uh, start on the O, 
Okay, starting on the O, uh, like again, just lightly going over the surface, just going over the, uh, the exact area of the marks. Just take your time, have stable hands, don't drink too much coffee before this, uh, and just do the, the very surface and then go deeper. Here's another quick tip. If you'll uh, get an old toothbrush or some sort of uh, stiff bristle brush, it'll help uh, when you want to clean out the, the engraving marks, uh, get rid of all the uh, acrylic particles and stuff, so you can see better what your trenches look like. Um, another reason for trying to engrave as deep as you can is when you mess up. Usually you'll slip off or something like that. If you if you go deep enough, when you fill it in with acrylic, where you slipped, it'll fill in that area too. But that part will be shallow, uh, so you can grind that off in the end. As you're grinding on the acrylic, you can grind it flush. Okay, here's the uh, finished product or the uh, of that stage. Uh, you can't see it very well. Let me. Uh, Focus in here. There we go. Hard to see. Uh, you could take your pencil if you need to and uh, and sketch over that to enhance the edges so you can see it better. What I'm doing now is uh, waxing the retainer on the cast in double time, uh, just so it won't take very long. This is uh, just to keep it on the model, keep it secure as I'm applying the acrylic. The model again. I'm so used to holding a model in a poor acrylic that I have to have it almost to do it. I can't do it just holding the retainer. What I also am doing is blocking out anywhere acrylic can get under the retainer. I, I'm using black acrylic. I do not want this to get under the retainer between the cast, the model, and the retainer. That would be bad. First thing you do uh, when you apply the acrylic is to wet the old acrylic with some monomer. This will help get the acrylic ready, uh, activate it for the new acrylic that we're going to be putting on top of it. Um, just put a little bit in the grooves that you made and uh, and then I like to pre-mix my acrylic. Uh, I'm using black powder. It's safer to use than black monomer as far as getting it everywhere. You want this kind of a like a molasses syrup uh, consistency. Uh, that way it will flow into the uh, trenches, the engravings that you made. Uh, I'm also using kind of a, uh, my hand's not shaking here, I'm actually vibrating it as you would stone when you fill in it, when you uh, pour up an impression. Uh, that way it will not get any air bubbles. Uh, this will save you time in the end, you won't have to fill in the air, air bubble later. Uh, so I'm just scooping in, just uh, filling in all the en engravings, trying to get it to flow better. Of course, I'm running out of time. It's getting thicker and thicker as I work, so you may actually have to push it into the the engravings, the trenches as you as you get through there. Uh, if you need to, you can wet it some more. That'll help with the flow, help it flow in there. Uh, you can also take your spatula or whatever you're using and dig into the trenches uh, through the black acrylic uh, just to relieve any air bubbles that are in there. Don't be uh, stingy with your acrylic. Be sure and add plenty. Build it up pretty good. Um, that just saves you from if it's too low it's going to look weird when you grind it off. You'll have it, uh, a bubble or a, a ditch in there. And so you see me adding black powder. Um, sometimes that's just easier to do. And remember, that's why we blocked out with the wax. If you use black powder or a colored monomer, that monomer will try to get up underneath that retainer. Uh, so I just add a little black powder on top so it sets. All right, no special settings on the uh, pressure pot. Uh, same temperature, same 
pressure um, gives you about 120 on my 120 degrees Fahrenheit on my degrees and about 22 pounds of pressure. Leave it in for about 10 minutes. Take it out, grind on it, polish it up. It's ready to go. Okay, here is the finished product. After all said and done, obviously I forgot to record the actual grinding of it uh, and the pumicing and polishing, but uh, you kind of get the point. You just finish it like normal. Uh, what you want to do is when you grind on it, just take your time and just reveal a little section of it as you grind down. Once you reveal it and it's got clean lines, uh, you can stop. That's why it was so important to go as deep as you can so that uh, without going through so that it gives you a little uh, playroom on the thickness. So there you go. Once you get the hang of it, uh, this is not hard to do uh, and you'll come up with some pretty cool designs. And just remember, you only live once. <laughs>